First of all, I would like to thank uh, the organization for inviting me to speak at this uh, symposium on religious intolerance. It is a topic that I've studied the past years, and um, today I will focus on the case law of the European Courts of Human Rights. Um, I will be ass assisted by an UNESCO uh, assistant for my PowerPoint presentation. And, um, the European Court of Human Rights, as you probably know, deals with complaints about violations of rights as set out in the European Convention on Human Rights. And in its case law, the European Court has developed a number of standards uh, for the right to freedom of expression as protected in Article 10. And the title of this symposium is called Toward a Culture of Respect. So in the next 10 minutes, I will try to answer the following question. What principles does the European Court set for freedom of expression and respect of religious beliefs? So Article 10 <clears throat> protects in its first paragraph the right to freedom of expression. And this right has a special position within the European Court uh, Convention. And the European Court calls the freedom of expression one of the essential foundations of a democratic society. And even expressions that offend, shock or disturb are therefore protected. Because the state must ensure a plurality of expressions and provide enough room for free and public debate. And this sounds not very respectful, offend, shock or disturb. But the second paragraph of Article 10 please, next slide, determines that the freedom of expression is not absolute and it can be limited in order to protect other interests, such as the protection of the public order, morals or, in this case, the rights of others. Now, as a general rule, the European Court does not prescribe what the restrictions to freedom of expression should be. But the court determines on a case-by-case -case basis which restrictions to freedom of expression are allowed. <clears throat> and to that effect, the court reviews whether a restriction is prescribed by the law, whether it pursues a legitimate aim, and whether it is strictly necessary in a democratic society. And on several occasions, the court has reviewed restrictions on expression in order to protect the religious sensitivities and the religious adherents. And more particularly, the court has tried to draw two different lines. Please, next slide. Now, the first line drawn by the court um, separates graciously offensive expression that may be prohibited from legitimate criticism of a religion. And the principal case forms the Otto Preninger Institute against Austria of 1994. And this concerned the prohibition to show a film in an art gallery in Austria, because the film depicted the Christian God as a senile man and Maria as a sensual woman. And this was considered as blasphemy. And the court found that this prohibition did not constitute a violation of freedom of expression because it protected the rights of others and more in particular, the right of respect of one's religious feelings. And it considered this right of respect of religious feelings as an integral part, part of the freedom of religion as protected in Article 9. And the court continued that amongst the duties and responsibilities connected with the exercise of the right of freedom of expression um, in the context of religious opinions and beliefs may be included an obligation to avoid as far as possible expressions that are graciously offensive to others and as an infringement of their rights and which are therefore uh, not a contribution to any public debate. Now the court has decided in a similar way in uh, cases concerning the Islamic faith. Next slide. In the case IA against Turkey in 2005, the court also found the conviction for blasphemy with regard to insulting passages about the Prophet Muhammad in the novel Forbidden Phrases permissible. 
and I will not repeat this forbidden phrase in front of this audience, but the court considered that the book was an abusive attack on the prophet of Islam and the conviction was intended to provide protection against offensive attacks on matters regarded as sacred by Muslims. But the judges of the European Court are highly divided on this issue <clears throat> and the idea that the right of respect of religious feelings forms an integral part of freedom of religion um, is, 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 is not an absolutely shared idea. And the question is whether it can in itself legitimize restrictions of expression. And so the court considers, um, when the court considers that a publication does contribute to a public debate, um, it decides very differently. Uh, and so the court has increasingly made a distinction between, on the one hand, free criticism of religious dogmas and the particular conduct of religious institutions or officials and prohibited attacks on religious adherents via the attack of their sacred symbols and figures. Um, one case, just an example, uh, was Tatlav against Turkey in 2006. This concerned another conviction for blasphemy, this time with regard to the book, The Reality of Islam. It was a critical commentary on the Quran. And this time the European Court found that the conviction, the conviction violated freedom of expression because, as the court said, the book did not have an insulting tone directed at the person of believers, nor did it constitute a harmful attack on sacred symbols notably of Muslims, even though they certainly could feel offended by this sharp comment on their religion. And so you see that the court increasingly makes a distinction between attacks on religious adherence and free criticism of a religion. Um, the next line that the court has drawn is between prohibited hate speech and legitimate criticism on immigration issues. And the court considers that hate speech may be prohibited because tolerance and respect for the equal dignity of all human beings constitute the foundations of a democratic pluralistic society. And the court has described hate speech very broadly as all forms of expressions which spread and incite and promote or justify hatred based on intolerance, including religious intolerance. And a principal case concerning hate speech forms Ferret against Belgium in 2009. And this concerned the conviction of a Belgian politician for incitement to hatred and discrimination in, relate, in relation to his statements um, that depicted Muslim immigrants as criminals and for his plea against Islamization. And the court found this conviction um, not a violation of freedom of expression. It considered political discourses that incite to hatred founded on religious ethnic or cultural prejudice represent a danger for the social peace and the social stability in democratic <coughs> states. And, <clears throat> and it stipulated that it is of crucial importance that politicians in their public discourses avoid to diffuse um, remarks susceptible uh, to nourish intolerance. And the court has decided in a similar way in several other cases concerning intolerance, and notably directed against Islam and Muslims. For example, a case concerning statements of uh, Jean-Marie Le Pen about Muslims, or a political uh, poster of the British National Party. <clears throat> I don't have enough time to discuss these cases in detail. But I think it is important to stress that the court does not oblige European states to criminalize and prosecute forms of blasphemy, hatred and intolerance. And it leaves Europe European states um, some margin uh, to decide for themselves how to apply their national laws. 
Um, so it results from this very short introduction into the case law of the European Court of Human Rights, uh, which expressions European states may prohibit. And the European Court does not principally reject the criminal prohibition of blasphemy. And it even <coughs> considers that a right to respect of religious feelings forms an integral part of freedom of religion. And so vehement attacks on sacred symbols and figures may be prohibited, but criticism of religious dogmas, institutions and official, officials must be possible. And prohibitions must therefore concern expressions that do not contribute to any public debate in fact, indirectly target the religious adherents and are graciously offensive to them. And the court also finds that expressions that incite to religious intolerance and hatred may be prohibited. And so the European case law undeniably contains principles that advance a culture of respect. But as it concerns legal restrictions, this respect concerns the equal dignity of religious adherents rather than the tenets of religion as such. But if we look beyond those legal prohibitions, I think there are many strategies to counter intolerance and to promote intercultural dialogue uh, that are better than legal prohibitions. And for example, uh, symposia like this. So I thank you for your attention.